So, um, so let's get into our first talk. So the first speaker uh, is Alicia Tsai, uh, who is a graduate student in EECS, uh, Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. And she's been involved in uh, women in data science or WIZ as we call it for short. I believe the longest um, on our whole planning committee. And Alicia is here to share her story about being a woman in data science as well as tell you a little bit more about uh, the women in data science event. And so over to you, Alicia. Thank you, Amy, for the introduction. And hello, everyone. Nice to meet you here. Um, let me just share my slides. Send it. Should everyone should see my slide? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So hello everyone. I'm Alicia, and I'm excited to meet everyone here. And a little bit about myself. So I graduated at National Taiwan University um, when I when I did my undergrad over there. I actually started studying major in business at first, but I feel like oh, I fall in love with statistics, I feel in love with data analytics, and that's why I started to like learn more about machine learning, learn more about data science and all of these great fields. And afterwards, I kind of work in the industry a little bit for to do, I was in a venture capital. Um, so I did deal sourcing in AI technology. At that time, I was like, oh my God, there's so many new technology, new things going on, and I really want to be part of it. I want to be part of the researcher. I want to be part of the inventor. I don't want to be sitting on the other side, just like looking at your revenue, looking at your cash flow. Or, oh, are you going to launch it or not? Are you able to be successful? It's like, oh, I feel very bad. I like have to re reject people every day because there are so many deals that I have to reject so many people. And that's why I decided to switch. I wanted to be on the other side. I wanted to be the inventor. I wanted to be the people building this technology. And so that's why I come to um, Berkeley and I was a master's student at, at School of Information. Um, so I'm probably an alumni of the uh, iSchool. And afterwards, I like, now I'm a PhD student at EECS. Um, so this is a very brief journey of me. Um, and I wanna talk more about uh, what I'm doing now because I, this is something that I'm really passionate. I finally get to be on the other side building all of these these uh, interesting things, looking at data. So the project that I'm working on right now is the first project is um, I wanted to use machine learning to do for social equity um, projects that are social equity. I want to use data science for community that are a bit under resourced. And so one of my project is to working with people in social welfare. And we are looking at children, uh, foster, children in foster care. So children who are in foster care, normally there are a lot of reasons why they will be removed from their home. So the biggest reason is neglect and then they're drug abuse, but it's very hard looking at these data to understand what are exactly the root cause and is there a better way to, uh, to help these people. And in the past, uh, the social welfare, the uh, people, researchers working in this problem, are only looking at data set that are very structured. They're nicely put in a column and we can use nicely in this uh, spreadsheet. But there are actually a lot of things that are being on tab. So for, so for example, social workers that who get to visit these families, they write a lot of notes. And during the court, during the hearings, they write, there are a lot of documents there they are being on tab. And so my project is to use natural language processing, look at these data set, look at these texts on structure fields to understand, okay, is there something else that we're missing or is there more that we can actually harness from looking at this te text data set? And one of the challenges is that these data sets are super sensitive. And so I learned a lot in this process that data science is not just numbers. There are a lot of, how do you deal with data confidentially? How do you understand um, different people using different language and they're meaning different things. So it also, it's not just about working solely with data. It's also about working with people in other field. Um, so I really learned a lot from that. And, and the key insight is that, so in this chart, in this chart, you probably see, okay, 60% are neglect, but there are actually more like, does, someone seeing a child 
strange walking on the street without your parents is that does that count as neglect some people may think oh maybe that's neglect maybe it's just not maybe their parents are busy maybe their parents need more help for to, so for childcare and instead of saying oh this is just a neglect can we say more that the parents maybe need a little bit help if the government can provide better child care system maybe we can reduce these numbers and it will not be like counted as neglect that there are more to it and so this is a project that we're looking at to see whether or not we can use these text data sets and to give more insight to combine with social welfare system and to better align all of these different services that California government can offer and to kind of better serve these communities. So that's the uh, a brief introductions of the project that I'm working on right now at, at Berkeley. Um, the other projects that I'm also looking on is fundamental um, understanding of machine learning. So in this example, it's very, you, you see that a image with some very, some some kind of small noises and the the prop the predictions or the algorithm can suddenly say oh i'm very confident i'm confident that this is panda from i'm confident very confident that this is not panda this is something else and this is definitely not true because we as a human we know it is still the same picture um so this is a very pro very si serious problem right now in, in all of the machine learning algorithm and can we trust it? Is it safe? If we're going to deploy it in mission critical um, project, or do we actually, can we actually trust it? And if we're all going to use these algorithms to decide people's, uh, for example, decide your long application or decide something that are in, that will have a lot of impact on you, can we really justify our, our decisions? And so this is something that I'm looking at as well um, in my PhD. And this is just another example to kind of illustrate this uh, problem that you can kind of easily, not easily, like, like it is shown that you can just design some random stickers that no one knows. And you just put that stickers in on beside your banana, beside your whatever the image classification you wanted to uh, classify and they will suddenly uh, behave in a very weird way that we don't understand. So this is my another part of my pro my research is to understand better um, what are the properties and what are these machine learning algorithms actually represent or can we better um, can we say okay we know that how much perturbation in my input will affect my the decision or the outcome of my output? And is there a way that we can bound these differences? And there is still, a, there's no no set answer. So it's it's still a very open question and uh, the whole research community is working hard on this. And so that that's why I think this is very exciting and has a lot of impact on what we are doing right now and what we'll, we will be doing in the future. So uh, short introductions about what I'm working on. And if you're interested, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to talk more about it with, with you. Okay, so switch gears to women in data science, WITS. So a brief introduction of, of WITS, which it started in 2015 uh, at Stanford. Um, it started as a one day technical conference at Stanford's every year. And over the year, it grew to worldwide. So every year, WITS Stanford will kind of put out a, a actually call for ambassadors around the world to co-host a regional WITS event in their own city or in their country or in their company. Um, so my, I was involved with WITS since 2017. So at first, and there's no WITS local event in my country. And that's why I decided to bring WITS to Taiwan, my, where my home country is. So in 2017, I founded the WITS Taipei, organized the WITS conference. And now the Taipei conference has been successfully running for like over, sorry, in, in 2018 until now. And so I'm very happy of that. Um, and my journey with WITS does not stop there. So I came to Berkeley and I met the WITS Berkeley planning committee Catherine at that time during 2019 at the WIT Stanford meetup. And that's that's how I connected 
with, Ber with Berkeley. And so I started to um, help out with, with Berkeley in 2020, last year. And this year we are going to launch a virtual, completely virtual with Berkeley uh, event. And so I'm very, very excited about it. I'll talk, I can talk more about our event later. Um, and another exciting thing for me is to see these community grow. So in 2017, although I founded it, but I kind of uh, needs to hand it over because I'm not in Taiwan anymore. And so we have institutionalized a lot of process and now the community grow grew from a conference, annual conference to a, a community that will continues to host the event over the year. So we have a new community to, uh, called the Taiwanese in Data Science and I'm very happy to see um, something small, grew, it grew from something larger. And that's, that's, that's something, that's why I've, I've been involved in different of these events because you will never know what it will become in the future. And that's very, it's very rewarding for me to see all of these changes. All right. And let's talk a bit more about with Berkeley. So last year we, so with Berkeley actually started a, a bit small at the School of Information. And last year we expanded. So we hold our with Berkeley conference at the, at the Siddhartha Dai Center. So it grew from some a smaller event at iSchool to the larger event to the whole campus. And so this is another example of seeing something small grew to a very big thing. And last year we have a panel. So on the, on the left, you see a panel discussion of different researchers, also industry practitioner around the Berkeley area. So in the panel, we talked about a lot about um, just people's research, but also like struggles or what do people think to improve diversity and inclusion in, a wor in, in our workspace. And that's very inspiring to, to us, but at least to me to have the chance to think about it and also have a chance to understand people's viewpoint. And also we have Jennifer Chase speaking about her amazing work on bias algorithm and all of her achievements. Um, over the year. I think at this conference, something that I learned a lot is that I, I get to see a lot of role models in front of me and I want to be someday become one of, become like them and in order to influence other people. So I hope that you'll also be able to find new inspirations and new role models during our Wits Berkeley event. So don't miss out our event this year. Okay, so there are more. So these are past Wits conference attendees and we also have students helping out. So I'm happy to see that with Berkeley can kind of, it's, it's a hub for uh, faculty, for researchers, for people in the local community, from grad students to undergrad students. We can all see, we can all share the same passions and be here um, to learn with each other. I also hear uh, an undergrad student sharing with me that she found an internship opportunity because she, talk to um, talk to people at Wits Berkeley. So that's very, I'm very happy to hear that. And all right, so this year, um, the whole, because of pandemic, um, the whole event will be virtual and we are going to split our usual one day event into three different dates. And each day we'll have two hours of programming in, in the morning. So Tuesday, March 9th, it's going to be research focused. So we will have keynote speakers and researchers talking about what they're doing. Um, so it's very exciting. We have very, very amazing speakers. And Wednesday, it's going to be student focused. So we have students line up, student talks line up, um, to talk about what they're doing at Berkeley. It's very happy. It's very, very interesting to see students work because it, like sometimes like, oh, why? I've never thought of it, it's very creative. And so it's like excited for me to hear more about uh, my fellow grad students and also Berkeley undergrads to share their projects with the whole community. And then to Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday we'll have mentorship plus the networking event. Um, we will invite people to kind of share their experience in, more on the mentorship side and more on diversity and inclusion. So it will be less focused on research, but it's a chance for you to meet people and to find your sense of 
to find your community as well. I find my community in uh, with involved um, when when I'm like interacting with these people, and so I hope they will you will find the same uh, sense of community as I do. And yeah, lastly, I wanted to introduce our planning committee. So I'm one of those, but there are a lot of, uh, of other amazing people around the campus to make this happen. So I wanna thank you for all of these. And I think I believe Claudia, um, the other planning, other organizer in our planning committee will be contributing to the later half of the talk. So stay tuned. Um, okay. So we also have a lot of sponsors on, on campus to help us do this. And this is something that I am very thankful for with Berkeley because when I'm organizing the with Taipei, this is something that I had the most headache on. Like, I where do I find my sponsor? And thank you, Berkeley. Like, there's so many departments, so many um, sponsor around the campus that are very readily to help and readily to sponsor us. And so I don't have to worry about that. I just have to focus on content programming. I'm so, so really. And I believe, yes, this is the end of my talk. And um, so personally, besides with Berkeley, I'm also involved with other nonprofit organizations. So um, I've been, I am also on the board of Women in Machine Learning and I also um, there are other nonprofit in organization at the Bay Area called Dota Analytics. So I've been involved with different, these two nonprofit as well currently. So if you are uh, interested in expanding your network or interested in nonprofit work, work um, feel free to reach out to me. I'm very happy to connect you with more people or share my experience with you. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you so much, Alicia. That was great. And I want to say that um, while um, Women in Data Science Berkeley is definitely committed to up uplifting underrepresented voices in data science, um, folks from all genders and gender expressions are certainly welcome uh, at the event. So please consider joining. And I'm wondering, does anybody have any questions? for Alicia. Let's see, I see one here in the chat. Any participation in WIDS from the School of Education and very topically the School of Public Health? Yeah, I believe we actually have thought of speakers in these different area, um, but sometimes it's unfortunate this year, they are a bit busy and so we all keep them in the loop and continue to invite them to speak at uh, Wits Berkeley. And so if you have any speakers nomination, you think you there's some there's people that are very good and feel free to send their name to us. We will continue to invite them. Yeah. Absolutely. And, an, and also an invitation to join our planning group. Um, if that would be uh, of interest as well. Any other questions for Alicia? Oh, and um, for people who would like to connect with me, um, I can send my email in the chat and also you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm not as active on LinkedIn, but I checked it when there is notification. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alicia. It was great to hear a bit about you. And thank you so much for orienting us to uh, WIDS. It's great. Thank you, Amy.